Theme music, please. Aloha, I'm Mick Calber. And I'm Bruce Omori. And you are... On On Hawaiian Hawaiian Time. Time! On Hawaiian Time is a podcast where Bruce and I talk story about life unfiltered here on the Big Island. Welcome to another episode of On Hawaiian Time. Today we've taken it on the road. We are podcasting on location in Volcano Winery in Volcano Hawaii. We're being hosted by the owner, Marie Butoff. Aloha. And this marks the first time we are all podcasting together in the same place. How about that? <laughs> As always, I'm joined by Bruce. How's it? And my wife, Anne. Aloha. And our amazing producer, Tim. Thank you. You're too kind. True. <laughs> <laughs> and this episode's guest, as previously mentioned, Marie Butoff. Aloha. Aloha. Marie, yes. a vineyard in Hawaii? Yes. How about that? How about that? Yeah, we um, purchased the vineyard in 99, so it was here in existence. The original owner was uh, Doc McKenney, who started the winery. He started it basically as a hobby and grew into a business. Um, unfortunately, he had a terrible accident here on property. And at that time, he put the winery up for sale, and Dal, my husband, came in and knew that he was going to live in Hawaii f- for his retirement. He that, that was his plan for all of his life. He fell in love with Hawaii back in the day when he was coming over with uh, doing testing with Hewlett Packard, is what he started off doing here. And then... Um, a friend of his found an article that was in the Wall Street Journal. It was a one-by-one one ad about a winery for sale. And he made a copy of it and faxed it to him because that's how long ago that was. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and said, let's get out of this business that we're in. They were in the um, tech business. And he says, let's go and buy this winery and make wine and uh, smoke cigars. So I know How long was that, Marie? Before? That was nine. That was in '97. Is when that started because he we purchased in '99. Wow. So it was about '97. So you moved on it pretty quickly. Well, no, he bought the winery, oh. the winery pretty quickly, and uh, we had to live back in the mainland to uh, make money and to support the winery at that <laughs> point that. in time. <laughs> um, and it was just a lot of fun. Uh, his oldest son, Scott, and his daughter, Susie, came out and ran it for the first eight years plus. Um, they had three years to turn it around, and they did a fine job, and mm-hmm. here we are today, and it's grown into a wonderful company. Um We have distribution on all the islands. We ship to 43 states right now, so we do a lot of e-commerce. That's what's keeping us alive right now. But um, it's been quite the journey. Um, Dell would be very proud of this right now. Uh, We lost him last July, actually, to um, cancer. Um, He was a spirit that you could feel the presence of anywhere. He, he was a very quiet man, but he can control a room with his smile. He yeah, we loved him. Yeah. Oh, that's a great, a great way to put it. I love it. Yeah, that he was, was a great And friend. a good golfer, yeah. too. Yeah. Yes, he is a good golfer. Yeah. yeah, Very good. So I assume along the way there were a few bumps on the road, other than just COVID-19. Correct. Um, well, we he went through the, in 2008, um, of course, prior to that, you know, to five, um, 05, 06, 07, when they were rocking and rolling. And um, we we're actually going to buy a automated system for the bottling and everything complete. And Dell was a very good businessman. And he says, you know what, we're just going to hold up. And we only bought the uh, labeler at that time, the automatic labor, which the staff was very happy because they were really tired of labeling 60,000 mm-hmm. bottles. Um, so we did get that one piece and he put a hold on that. And thank God he did because that's when the you know, economy all went down to that. We made it through that, survived, did really, really well. Um, we moved over here permanently about 12 years ago now. And uh, him and I have been running it and doing lots of fun, different things. And then we had the big eruption and that shut us down for a while. We thought, how can we survive that with the business, with the park being shut down and things? And we were 
We were never closed a day. We remained open the entire time, kept all of our staff at that time also. Um, and then, of course, COVID happened now, and uh, this has been the tough one. This is the first time ever in the history of the winery that we actually had to lay off some people. Mm. But June 1st, which is Monday, we're opening back up. Yay. So our tasting room will be open. Good our for you. staff will be going to half the staff I was able to keep full time. Lonnie was able to I, able to keep her as much as possible, not full time, but kept her hours um, because she is my backbone in the tasting room. She keeps my sanity. She keeps it clean and neat and beautiful and takes really good care of me. And and Lonnie De La Pena is with us as well. She's Hello, on you mic. guys. <laughs> Aloha. <laughs> And then Alex, who is our general manager, he is here. Um, not today, but he's here also. And then Kian, who is our assistant winemaker. He, of course, we have to keep making wine because we keep selling wine, which is a, a big plus. <laughs> um, he is here. And then uh, Tommy. And Tommy has been here with us now for almost 20 years. And he wow. takes care of our fields. And he's a super guy, too. So, the, so five of them I was able to keep most of their hours. And now starting in June, my part-timers will start coming back as needed. So we're hoping uh, we'll be booked because now we have to do, there's a lot of different new rules in regards to doing wine tastings. Sure. I could only have 10 people in the tasting room at a time. As life prior to this, we could have anywhere from 10 to 75 people in there. We could wow. do anywhere from 30 to 150 tastings a day. So you just don't know. When days like this, it's busy. So um, starting on Monday, we're taking reservations. We're going to do uh, 10 people at a time every hour and uh, do the best that we could possibly do. Right on. Just for That's our great. listeners' information, by the time they hear this podcast, you will have been open at least for four or five days. Great. So they should so, be coming up. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the Volcano Winery is open, right? Correct. Call it is for open. Your, call for your tasting. Call for your tasting, <laughs> yes. And we, um, anytime you're welcome to come up to purchase bottles. So those are always available. If you don't feel comfortable coming in at this point in time, some people do not, you just call and we do a curbside, you place your order, we'll package your wine up for you and you drive on up and get out of your car and pick it up off the table and go home and enjoy it. And what's, what's your website if people want to order online? Uh, www.volcanowinery.com. I find what is fascinating about the Big Island is so many different parts of this island are different um, climate wise, geographically and volcano is so unique on this Island. what are we at? Like 4,000 foot elevation, right. It's what? 62 degrees here right now. I'm starting to get a shiver. <laughs> <laughs> My friends in Connecticut will say that's a joke, <laughs> Knock it off. but you know, meanwhile, it's, it's like 10 degrees, 15 degrees warmer in Hilo and right. on other parts of the Island. And it's just, it's beautiful up here. There's a beautiful trade wind blowing. Correct. Not beautiful for the audio for our microphones, but uh, we'll try to fix that later. <laughs> hey, I wanted to ask: Was it? Did you have trouble getting people to accept uh, wine from Hawaii? It's kind of an odd. Thing. Sure, because um, we're really not a designated region. A lot of right. different the wineries. So that's something we would love to do, but that is very tricky and complicating in having that approval. Um, of course, we always have our visitors that come in and say, oh, you know, we're our official, you know, we're our connoisseurs and we're from wine country and we know everything that there is possibly know about wine. And we very kindly say, we, I'm sure you do. Are you from France? Is that what you're from? No, they're from California, <laughs> but um, they do a great job. And we actually ship the most wine in e-commerce to our California visitors. Interesting. Oh, so nice. once they have it, they love it because it's not a competition with them. Our wines are unique. They are touched by Hawaii. It's a little bit of paradise you get to take home with you. And um, it has quite the quite the following. We have a great wine. Our wine club, Lonnie knows about that. How many do we have in the wine club now? Over 500. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, and that has really grown. Grown. And Lonnie is she is the one that did that. I give her all the kudos for that. Thanks, Mike. But um, that's how we were able to remain open, and I was able to continue to have my staff here was from the wine club because our wine club was in April. So that actually gave me enough money to pay my staff, which was wonderful for right. that. Nice. And um, now we're blessed again that's going to be coming up in July also. So that If that you wanted help. to sign up for the wine club, how would you do that? You could either call. We could do it over the phone. You could go to the website. We could mail you uh, a form. 
Uh, there is a form on our website, and they're going to be adding a new one. So probably by the time that you hear this podcast, you'll be able to go and do a uh, a live type on the website, whatever that is, to, to do that, or print okay. it out and send it in. Great. But call, we have people calling all the time to, to join the uh, wine club over the phone. They like that personal touch, especially when you know Lonnie's on the phone with them, and she's a, a, a great ambassador for the, the winery and for Hawaii. So it works out well. Thanks, Marie. And the wine club is actually a huge benefit to our customers. So they really enjoy it as well. They get great discounts off the bottles. They get first privileges on their new release uh, for the estates. And they get special shipping. So there's no cost to the member except for your wine and your shipping. And it's three bottles every three months. So mahalo to our wine club members for Absolutely. keeping us alive. And the, yeah, they, the um, as well. they love the specialty um, care that they get with that, especially um, our we have quite a few local that are in the wine club that will just come up to get it because they love coming up here. That you know, the, it's a beautiful place, and um, they get first dibs then um, when we release our tickets for the Harvest Festival, which is a big event that we we do up here, and um, they they really like to be able to get their tickets first because we sell out pretty quickly. On and they that. like to get their free tastings and their well. free tastings, <laughs> so they get free tastings also. But yeah, they are. Uh, you know, our, our local wine club members are, are great. I mean, they bring all their friends and everything, so it works out good for everybody. You know, Marie, you, you mentioned that um, the wine here is different from other places, obviously, a different climate and so on. How does it differ? How, there have to be pros and cons, right, of growing grapes and making wine in Hawaii? There's lots of different uh scenarios that happen in regards to our wines being made. Um, growing the grapes first off is very tough. Um, we are growing the Symphony and the Pinot. And what makes it so hard? We have no dirt. It's number one. <laughs> <laughs> so well, that's that say, yeah. So that's the, the challenge in regard to that. Um, we're actually in a nice little microclimate here. So like down in the village, they could get up to two to 300 inches of rain for the year. We're here on the dry corner here, and we only get about 70 inches of rain. So that works out very well for us. The grapes, when we plant the grapes, we have to bring uh, heavy equipment in, bust up the lava, and then backfill, put dirt in, and go for there. It's actually really good for the grapes because the grapes like to, um, they like to struggle. The harder the struggle, the better that they are. So it works in our favor in regards to that. Um, we are not self-sufficient in bringing, um, growing all of our grapes for our wine since we have grown so much. I mean, we're up to, uh, Lonnie, about 70,000 bottles a year mm -hmm. is what we're producing right now. And uh, we sell everything that we produce. Wow. So mm -hmm. um, we have a little bit over 12 acres of grapes mm -hmm. and about two acres of tea. Yep. And so we still have to import from California and from Washington for um, bringing grapes in. And that's the other hard part of owning a business here in Hawaii. Everything is shipped. For us, we have to ship all of our glass in. So that means all of our wine tasting glasses, all of our bottles, all of our labels, all of our bottle sleeves, all of our corks, all of our barrels. Everything is shipped in. So that is... Uh, it's quite amazing. You know, Dell made an amazing uh, model here. It's a perfectly run machine. And, um, yeah, he blessed us with that. That's for sure. That's great. Marie, are, is Volcano Winery the only winery on an active volcano? Yes, it is. There's one other winery in our state. And it's a Maui winery. Uh -huh. And they're over there also. Um, they're growing grapes too. Um, but we are uh, the one that's on the active. You know, it's pretty yeah. cool. When we would do the, when the, the flow was going down, we were able to sit out here and um, we had tastings out here and a barbecue and things that were going on. And over the tree line, just straight looking out, you could see the glow from the lava. Mm -hmm. And it was quite impressive. <laughs> I mean, we had, it, it was, that's when we were doing uh, tours here at night. And we had anywhere from 75 to 200 people wow. running through mm -hmm. on that event. And they were in and out of here in two hours. Nice. Right. Wine tasting, dinner, and purchasing, which was incredible. And we're definitely located near the active volcano because we're two miles away from Holly Mott Mo. Mm -hmm. So definitely <laughs> uh, sitting on the active volcano, I would say. And we were in the middle of a tour when it first erupted. 
and Del and Marie were here, it shook us to the core. I mean, I was doing a tasting outside here and everybody was clapping. They thought it was a part of our thing. <laughs> thing. You know, they said, do it again. And then boom, it, it happened again. We had the aftershock yeah, right you, out there. You were having really heavy earthquakes up here in Volcano, huh? Oh, That's it was One after another after another. Continuous. Mm-hmm. It was, I was very rattled by it. Um, it made me really anxious. Del was fine. You know, he's... That was, was very laid back. Um, not not too much ever rattled. He was pretty good at saying no. <laughs> that was his, his thing. Whenever you ask him, and everybody knew that here, was when we wanted something new at the wine or anything, he would say no, and you probably had to get at least three to four no's out of him before he, he would get something. So, but uh, what they say, Tim, they had six hundred earthquakes and. Two months, was it? Yeah, I, I don't remember the exact number, but it was intense and it was nonstop for a while. Yeah. yeah. And Bruce and I were up here in 2018 because you wanted to get some photos of the uh, Yeah, the bloom. ash bloom. Yeah. And uh, we stopped. And the here. cracks in the road, right, Bruce? Well, that happened while we were here. <laughs> yeah, right. We had an earthquake and um, a guy driving by mentioned the cracks on the highway. Mm-hmm. So we went down there to shoot it. Yeah, we were, we were here at the winery for uh, about 15, 20 minutes talking to Kendall, I think. Yeah, Kendall. That's yeah. right. And um, yeah, just killing time because the plume wasn't as active as it had been the day before. So we said, well, we'll just wait it out and see if anything happens. And sure enough, it did. It happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we had quite the show over here. We had um, a lot of the, uh, the news feed people were coming and parking in our um, Jessica from the park had them come over here so the CNN trucks and Fox and all those would come back because it would just bellow. I mean, we had the perfect shot for it and being far enough away. But the earthquakes, we only lost one wine glass. Yeah. Which oh, was amazing. Yeah. We had it on yeah. a high shelf. That's amazing. Everything yeah. else just kind of danced to and, you know, worked its way <laughs> on the shelf and kept it going. But it was quite interesting. Coming from someone that was here all day from open to closed, you could feel it. Um, just kind of like a breathing dragon. It would start pretty low and you would kind of feel those little tremors. And as the day progressed, it would get bigger and bigger and bigger. And by the end of the day, it was swinging the chandelier inside. And so by the end of the three month period, I mean, of course it was a little frightening for people that um, are used to maybe California earthquakes or not used to, to what a volcano can do and being on an island with such an active, powerful thing. Um, but it was pretty interesting. By the end, we were making bets to see when that five-pointer was going to hit because we knew it was going to happen <laughs> every day. But what time was it going to happen? So it was very eventful here. Um, quite interesting, for yeah, they, sure. They, they were, yeah. I think they were putting, what, $5 in the hat every day, and then they would write their times down. <laughs> That's great. Everybody yeah, seemed you... to pick out their... I think Alex probably succeeded quite often in... He did a lot of research, a lot of cheating behind that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were getting regularly five point something earthquakes every, every day. day. Every day. And then a multitude of three point and whatever, four all, point. All day under, long. Yeah. Yeah, continue. That was crazy. But just so people know, the, the, the eruptive part, the lava part, was next to our house in Leilani, right. which was, what, 25 miles down rift Over. from here. Correct. What was happening up here was the crater was collapsing. Correct. Yeah, we're feeding it down to you guys. <laughs> and now it's it's more than twice as well, more than four times as big. It was a half a mile across, and now it's over a mile. Wow! In diameter. Yeah, it's pretty. So. If, if you haven't been back up there to, to just to witness the what creation happened after that lava coming out, it is it's amazing. It's stunning. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely stunning. stunning. How did that affect your business in 2018 when that was happening? Oh, it was tough. There was days that we didn't see a lot of people come up. Um, very few. Yeah, it was... Uh, the park was closed. The park was so closed. Very little yeah. visitors. And also, like you said, the, the road was like an eggshell. So yeah, <laughs> it was quite We you know, were probably down pretty close to where we are now. Probably uh, not even... We maybe had 5% of our business. Like we're down 95%. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was tough. Crazy. Were you able to keep operating? Yes. Mm-hmm. You, so you did? Hmm. We did. So yeah, we couldn't spend a lot of money. We just had to... Be strict and responsible and survive, basically. So being this close in proximity to Hale Ma'u Ma'u, did it, uh, did the VOG affect your crop? Any? We had one day that we had some ash, but it was nothing bad. Uh, we actually probably had the best air on the island. 
because with the trades and everything, it just blew it. It was like this most of the time. Yeah, you can hear the trades was, right now. Yeah, yeah. Was, you know, <laughs> Kalu it was, definitely got it worse. Yeah, than we Kalu did. was bad, um, but here it was. It was good. I mean, a couple of days it was boggy where we had to shut yeah, the two windows. Two days the wind turned on us. Right. And it came in our direction, and then we lost some of the flowering season when that first started just because it was a little bit more delicate on the vines at that time. And once the fruit set, it didn't make as much of a difference um, on affecting it as far as that goes, but it, I think it did give a little bit more of a maybe so fair girl, volcanic quality to the grapes. Just like a, that yeah, there's a little bit of a smoke. A little bit. Uh, definitely like a, uh, a, a smoke hint in the wine, mm-hmm. I wanted to say, in, in our state, um, mm. which... One of those. Which we're going to go into sure. in September when we release that could be the eruption year. So that's going to be a really fun estate to try, the one that's coming Ooh, out. Wow. Yeah, soon. Eruption <laughs> wine. The eruption wine. That will be in September. It has wow. that smoky yeah. flavor. So, we, yeah, we're not going to be able to do our um, Harvest Festival this year, unfortunately. Um, we just feel that it's too soon for the community to have 250 people in this area yeah. at that given point in time. So we're just... Um, going to take a break on that and we'll go back next year and the following year and doing that um just because the um community here up in volcano has been really kind of double hit from the sure having the eruption with their businesses and things like that and now with this you know they're they're closed yeah we are, we're fortunate we still have e-coms and we st- people are still buying wine you know they'll come up and get their wine and take it but you know some of the restaurants you know their doors are closed Kilway Lodge and you know oh here and uh, Eagle Lighthouse and all you know all those owners so has uh, alcohol consumption been up because of COVID? At my house, it has. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it has. Um, of course, you know, everybody is uh, purchasing wine. We're not as, um, you, you'll hear a lot, like with the mainland, especially with the winery and distilleries, that they're they're all time shipping and their distributions and things like that. It's a lot different for us on the island because our shipping costs are ridiculous. Yeah. And for me to ship a case of wine to the mainland, it's seventy dollars just for shipping, mm-hmm. and that's cost. I don't sure. make anything on shipping, so they have to wait. So right now on the mainland, most wineries are offering five dollar flat shipping, zero shipping, <laughs> things like that. So, um, so we're offering twenty percent off our wines. Correct. We get twenty. So they we get twenty really percent off bottles, wines. but shipping we can't get around. Yeah, even our you know the distributor is is hurting right now. Mm-hmm. They they had sure. to. Um, because, you know, we were getting at this time of year last year or all the years, you know, every day is 30,000 people a day. Now we're getting 500, 200. It's a huge difference. Yeah. The economy is so. Uh, as Dell would say, this too shall pass and we will move on. <laughs> I was real curious. What is the process that you go through with uh, the wine when you pick it and how long it takes before you pick it to Pouring it out of the bottle. I'm going to let Lonnie go on with that because Perfect. she knows the more detailed of it. I know the basics of it, uh, but she knows the, the entire process. So she could explain the wines and the process maybe at the same time could work for us. Yes? Yeah, great. So I am definitely not the winemaker, but I have had my hands in assisting in uh, producing and definitely the harvesting side. So when we harvest, we follow the California season naturally. And we do harvest all of our grapes off of the vines uh, late September, early October sometimes, depending on the weather. If it's too rainy, we'll get them off the vine a little earlier. And straight from the vineyard, we are um, hand harvesting those with buckets, um, bringing those over to the weighing area. They get sprayed down. They get put into a crushing machine, uh, which is very kind of old school winery style. There's nothing high tech here. Besides, Marie talked about that label maker. That's the only thing we really have that's automated. Everything is very hands on here. So there's a very um, small group of us that all go out, harvest the grapes. We start the crushing, destemming, which is all hand done, pulling all the stems out of there. From there, it depends if it's red or white grapes. If it's a red grape, it's going to go for skin contact and maceration, which is basically allowing that skins to release its beautiful color, texture, quality, tannins. And that's going to go ahead and make that beautiful red wine. In our case, that would be our Pinot Noir and our Syrah that's going to go through that. And then when we have our white grapes, that gets pressed and crushed. Um, And then that goes and starts fermentation. And we start with the CO2 and the yeast directly right from the vineyard. So it happens all within. We pick everything off of our just under um, 
about 12 acres of active vines here. We do that in two days and start fermentation at that same time. We also bring in local fruit. So we have our guava that has fermentation separately and has its own fermentation. It's a little longer, thicker puree of our local Hawaiian guavas that is pureed down whole. So you're getting skins and seeds and different tannins and complexity coming forward from that fruit itself. And that's blended to the symphony grape. And then we have also jibuchicaba, which is a local favorite. That's in the volcano red and the volcano blush, a Brazilian bark berry that grows wild here on the Big Island. That's all sourced from the Big Island as well. That goes through its own kind of uh, red skin fermentation because it has great dark skin. So we definitely do the skin contact on the berries as well and allow that to ferment separately. And that gets blended to a ruby red Cabernet base, which is Cabernet Sauvignon, Carignan and Alicante. That's from California. Some blends that we can't grow here. And then that's mixed with our Symphony Dry as well. That's a top seller for us. Very nice and semi-sweet and delicious. And then the second one with the blush, that's just the white Symphony Grape blended to the Jibuchi Kaba. And then the final fermentation that we do uh, very unique is meads. We have two honey wines and those are our dessert wines. Pure local honey brought in by 55 gallon drums. All the fermentation is done here. They add the yeast and the water to that. That starts fermentation. We have one classic pure gold macadamia honey, and we have a second one that our winemaker um, created and about 12 years ago or something like that. But it is the infusion tea wine, which is our specialty macadamia honey wine soaked and infused with our estate black tea, which is Japanese black tea, which is all produced in hand grown and picked here on the property and fully roasted and a big bag is steeped into the completed vat of macadamia honey. So there are a lot of different fermentation styles that's happening in the vat room. But when we harvest, it's all done within two days off of the property here and the fermentation starts then. If we get grapes in, we have some of those coming in flash frozen. We'll start fermentation when they arrive, um, depending if that's gonna be the Carneros um, grape that comes in for our limited, or maybe some of that blend for that Ruby Red Cabernet. And then we grow Symphony here as well. So that gets harvested off our property, but that also gets fermented and brought in from California. And then we do all the uh, fermentation here. So everything is locally done and produced right here, all by hand, 70,000 bottles. I think she's done this before. Wow, what do you guys think? Yeah. yeah, she's pretty good at it. Yeah, she's I love it. she does wow. she does all of our training and everything too for our staff. So um, they have a, a great leader and teacher here. Thanks, she's guys. she's awesome. But the, yeah, and that's you know as you were saying, what is different? Our wines are different all the way across mm. from just from start to finish. They're all unique. Wow. They're all done differently. Um, because we, we still do everything old school. I mean, it's, it's just the way it is. That's how we have to make it work here on the island. And Unfortunately, from, so the taste sorry. doesn't come across on a podcast, so right. our people will have to order <laughs> things and taste them themselves. Correct. You know or what's really fun here. about right. these wines? A lot of people think when you think about a Hawaiian wine, it's a novelty, uh, that it's a sweet, sugary, syrupy thing that's not a real wine. And coming from a wine drinker, Marie as well, he's a wine drinker. You <laughs> will know after, right? Winos here. Um, you will definitely know that these are real wines. And we're, we have real winemakers here. And we're, we're harvesting our grapes. And these are all local fruit. And they're very well-made wines. The top residual sugar that you're going to get on any of our wines is 6%. And that's your normal Moscato. So when you're thinking about that in the realm of people say, oh, it's sweet Hawaiian wine, like, I don't want that. It's absolutely not correct. You have to come and try it. Don't knock it before you try it. And they are amazing. Mm, they sound sure. so they yummy. And yeah. the tea that we use in the infusion is our tea also. And our tea is world known, award winning. We won yep. first place at Totus, which was a couple of years, was the first uh, mm -hmm. American. Tea. Yeah, all the growers from the United States. So yep. we had, they came to Hawaii actually, and uh, they did a tea competition. And there were 80 growers, I think, that came. Within the United States, Within the, I believe, yep. And it told us just means tea of the United States, and that was a tea award or thing that they had up here. And we won first for our white tea and second for our silver needle, so, I believe. I believe. Mm -hmm. And then we just won first for our... Black tea. Black tea in, Aus in Australia. In Australia. Mm -hmm. nice. Wow. So it's, yeah. it's wow. um, World-renowned. Yeah, That's those, those that um, know the, the tea world, because their tea connoisseurs and wine are very much the same. They know, you know, th their teas. The people that know their teas that come in, try our, wine, our teas, and they're like, this is, this is like, this is tea that I would drink, they would yeah. say. It's very premium. Yeah. Super, super quality. We have... 
beautiful tabletops of tea just under two acres, like Marie said, right um, next to our vineyard. And we planted koa, they planted koa, you know, back so it's nicely planted within the vineyard to kind of convert nitrogen into the soil. So it's grown all around the tea and it's lush and beautiful. We hand pick it all. It's hand picked by the leaf. You have uh, your top two leaves when you're doing your white tea. You have your silver needle on the second leaf. That one goes through no roasting. It's a beautiful just screen drying, higher antioxidant, very good for you, very low in caffeine, just naturally um, and delicate and delicious. And then we also do a green tea and a black tea, which we pick an additional leaf. It's a silver needle, second and third leaf. Green tea is partially roasted after screen drying and the black is fully roasted. Everything is done right in here in Volcano. It's all loose leaf and it's very premium. So you harvest all the tea. So we have green tea, white tea, silver needle tea. What did I miss? White, green, white, and black, black is what we're currently right. producing. Those the silver all, needle comes with all of those, but we're not doing it separately That all right now. comes from the same plant. It's not different plants. It's just what leaf you pick. We have how many varieties of tea? Four, four varieties of tea. that Four we Japanese grow, varietals. Four, four Japanese varietals. But when you harvest the tea, it's just what leaf you pick that makes the yeah, tea, which never, I had no idea. No, we didn't know that either. Right. We're, we're friends with um, uh, Mike Longo and... Yep. and um, Rob, uh, Rob Nunnally. Sure. And, uh, you know, Big tea we, they introduced us to that. I said, wait a minute, you mean there's not an Earl Grey plant? Right, you know? right. <laughs> and that, that blew me away. Yeah. But they, they were have, in the contest. I don't know if you were talking about the one that was here. Yes. Mm -hmm. But they won some things. You won some. Right. A, a lot of people are coming to realize that there's some very high quality tea grown in Hawaii. Yes. It's very well known. Um, Eva Lee, who does our roasting for us, she has really taken the, the tea level up quite a few notches in the volcano area. She helped us a lot um, um, getting started and doing different things. We actually got started with the tea through um, a grant from the university. We work with them hmm. quite a bit. Um, and it was when Scott was here back then, he started working with the uh, the, the, the people and they mentioned, you know, if you would like to try to go ahead and do that. And uh, it worked very, very well. So the same thing, like we, we grow all of us now too, because, you know, we have to add something new. <laughs> we try to do that. <laughs> Don't get boring. So with the university, we have 12 olive trees that are sitting behind me. And um, we did get olives last year, which was quite wow, exciting. Wow, that's cool. So now we're going to make olive oil as soon as I... Uh, I guess I have to watch a lot more YouTubes because we we haven't been very successful with it yet. But yeah. we're going to try. Anything you don't know these days, watch yeah. a YouTube video. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> Google it. Right, yeah. yeah. Now, Lonnie, I think, is going to pour us to taste some of our limited. Limited Pinot Noir. Which mm -hmm. is... And one this is a favorites. yummy 2017 vintage. And it's also one of the heavier bodied Pinots that we have on our line. Um, and we produce three Pinot Noirs here. Now, we do have an estate like we talked about. That one is also the same vintage, 2017. Marie does like a little bolder body, so we're going to be sampling the limited right now. But all three are delicious. This one in particular, though, is a Carneros California grape, and it comes from Carneros Valley. It's going to give us more of the skins of the Pinot Noir that we can't grow here. We get quite a lot of rainfall here, like we mentioned, 70 to 100 inches of rain. Um, and that does thin the skins just a little bit, gives you more of the dryness of the grapes. This one is going to give you a little of that dark cherry and plum note coming through as well. Smoky French oak on the finish here. We're using Bordeaux medium roast on all of our Pinot Noirs in different lengths. And this is going to be tough on our wine aficionados out there if we're tasting wine and they can't. And so, you know, I guess they're going to have to call and, as well. Oh, yeah, and order some. They can whet their appetite. <laughs> exactly. You know, I once heard a, a wine aficionado, I think it was on a podcast, and someone asked her, you know, how do you know what's good? How do you become accustomed to being a, an aficionado? And she said, if it tastes good to you, it's good. Correct. And that's all yeah, that matters. That's, that's <laughs> all that matters. It doesn't matter the cost of the bottle at all in regards to that um it's what bottle is open on your table and you're enjoying it that's the right. best wine that there is it's like chinese <laughs> food everybody got their own best selection yeah yeah and we do have a little bit of everything for everyone we have dry wines semi-sweet wines and then those honey dessert wines on the end oh getting full yeah, <laughs> that's how I bet you that's Lonnie's glass. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> Smart. Smart. Okay, Lonnie, you're going to make your toast. You do the nice. Oh. Go ahead. 
Cheers, this is you guys. To you. Mahalo to everybody for supporting Volcano Wiring. Thank you guys for coming up and doing this. We really appreciate it. And we are excited to see everybody back up here safely. Of course, you have to bring your mask, but uh, we'll be smiling through our mask. We'll see it through your guys' <laughs> eyes. And uh, mahalo. Our uh, pleasure. Uh, cheers. Uh, cheers. Uh -huh. cheers. Mm. To all of you. Chinga ching. Clink, ching, clink, clink, clink. You can't clink with me. Yeah, nice and dry and smooth on that Pinot Noir. Bruce is traversing across the table oh, that is through nice. the wires. That's beautiful. Cheersing everyone. Mm. Cheers. To get Cheers. the visual, you might have to go to our YouTube channel to watch this. <laughs> Cheersing? Is that a word? Cheersing? Cheersing. Cheersing. Cheersing, Cheersing sounds good. Sure. <laughs> so Marie, where good. are you from prior to Hawaii? Originally, I'm from Ohio. I grew up in um, Youngstown, Ohio, which is, um, you have Cleveland up north and you have Akron to the south. We're kind of like right in the middle of the triangle of that area is where I originally grew up, um, but lived all over the place. Dell was in um, tech world, so he moved all over the place. And he is originally from Minnesota. Um, when he turned 18, he left Minnesota never to return to snow again. I heard that. <laughs> there you go. I'm with him. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so it's, and we were never in the wine business before. That's everybody assumed that we were. We just like to drink wine and uh, thought it would be a nice adventure and uh, to spend the rest of our lives doing something that we enjoyed. And that's nice. why we do it. So Absolutely. did you consider yourself a Buckeye? I did. I, and the sad thing about it was I was a, a Buckeye, and I also cheer for Cleveland Browns, too. And it's, been, it's been a hard life. It's been a really hard life. And Dell was with Minnesota. I mean, so we suffered yeah. a long time with yeah. our teams. But That's it, brutal. It is what it is. I was a Cubs fan, and we finally got over that, you know, a few yeah. years ago. A few but years. Man, that was a tough one, too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in Hawaii, all you have to do is really worry about a tea time. Correct. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's my favorite time also. Yeah, I do love to play golf, too. We're going to sure miss our little course up here. Yeah, that's yeah, a problem. Yeah, we lost yeah. golf course. We're still talking about buying it somehow. You, you should. Know, resurrecting it. <laughs> a victim of the, the, the COVID, I guess. I guess. The oh, I don't know. No. That place might have gone down anyway, don't you think? Oh, fire didn't it's, sure help. The fire did yeah, not help. Um, you know, there... That again is a tough business yeah. to have. Yeah. Um, you ha it has to be tightly managed, and it is what it is. That's you know a lot of our businesses here in Hawaii. They have to remember that we are a business. Right. <laughs> we are real. We have hours that we're here from ten to five thirty. You know, and, and just like the winery, the the golf course up here is unique. Correct. I mean, it's how many places can you have a golf course on an active volcano? Correct. And the climate zone, we, we played it in the front nine. It can be raining. The next back nine can be sunny and dry. Yes. Actually, a hole to hole, they can change. Absolutely. <laughs> so crazy. Yeah, and and, and uh, Madam Paley sure can play havoc on your balls over there, too. <laughs> oh. Many a time. That, oh. I'm, I'm like, I can't believe I've lost another ball up here. I've lost more balls at this course than I've done even at Big Island, yeah, which I I lose a lot of balls there too, but um, <laughs> I play for fun. I have a great time. It's 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 a good, it's good times. Yeah. You go to Makani now, and we've lost as many in hole seventeen and eighteen as the rest of the course. Uh huh. Crazy. Right. Yep. I oh, well. Monolani should be opening back up soon. The course is beautiful. It's in great shape, but nobody's playing it right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bruce. As a fellow business owner on the Big Island, small business owner and you know, a brick and mortar mm -hmm. like Marie, like well, what kind of things do you guys um, find in terms of uh, the challenging uh, in terms of running a business on the Big Island? I mean, obviously, right now, everyone in the world is having a challenge, but is there anything unique or special that you guys share in common in terms of being small business owners on an island in the middle of the Pacific? I mean, you're tourist based, right? Tourist based, yeah. And, you know, Marie brought up a good uh, point uh, about shipping. Being in the middle of the Pacific, I mean, it's, of course, it's beautiful here, but we're at such a disadvantage to large business because everything's, you know, we need everything. to ship everything in and we ship everything out. You know, even for my photography, my lab is in California. So they need to ship the prints to me 
I sign the pieces and they have to be shipped out. So there's that additional cost of doing business here. Everything's so expensive. Correct. You know? uh, it's something it's, that... It's, it's just, it's mind-blowing. Yeah. For those that um, have not run a business in Hawaii, it's it's a whole different way of life. You can't, it's really hard. Um, Dal was the accountant. He did all the, uh, put the pencil to everything and... As soon as we think we would have it figured out to the right, correct pricing, then the shipping would go up because the gasoline went up. So then there was a new surcharge and then there is a new something else happening or Mm -hmm. you can't get that item any longer. I'm sorry, we don't produce it anymore. Or no, we're we're not going to ship to you anymore. We're done. We're done with that because they can't. It's expensive for people to ship to Mm -hmm. us. And in the beginning, you know, some would try to negotiate and we would try to work out the shipping deals and things like that. But you, you can't do it anymore. You have to put it into the product, the cost of the product. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. It's a blessing. You know, we're all blessed to be here and to be able to participate and to be on this island and live this life. Um, but, but, but it's tough. It's, it's tough. Um, I'm fortunate to have amazing employees. Tough times ahead, though. Tough times ahead. We're, we're travel restrictions are still in place, even for inner island travel. Correct. But Governor Ige is talking about extending the um, overseas travel, trans-Pacific travel, into July. Th- that is very scary for us. Yeah, I mean, I, me I too. you know. Bruce and I, we, you know, we do business together. I have his prints here and, you know, we take care of each other and, uh, we sold a lot. You know, we had, it was, it was a great business model that we have going here, both, you know, his place and my place. I mean, we, you know, we worked hard to get where we're at and it, it, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking actually to be in this position because we know we could do it. We know it's there. We know we have the relationships, we, you know, we have the great employees, we have the facilities, we have, you know, we have the model. Now we need the people. And half of you want to say, you know, let's have the travel back. But right now we're probably the safest place in the world. Yeah, that's <laughs> the problem, you know. That's as the as much as we need the visitors, we've dodged the bullet here. Correct. And, you know, if we bring the visitors back here and it's kept and Cook bringing back all the diseases to the island, Whoa. Correct. You know, we could be in big trouble. I, I, I agree. So, you know, and that's why I respect, you know, a lot. And that's, it is a challenge. It's, it's, a, it's a, a conflict in my own being, you sure. know, that, that yeah. I, I want this to happen, but I, and, but I don't want any harm to come sure. to anybody. And it's just something that we have to, you know, we're going to have to wait and see. What, what, what's going to happen? Yeah. You know, we're being respectful. You know, we ask everybody to wear their mask and things like that. I know some people do, some people don't, you know, if you're not the six feet apart. Um, but when you come here, you're going to wear your mask because it's not for me and it's not for you. It's, you know, it's for those that are compromised. It's for my father or it would be for my husband, you know, exactly. things like that, that you have to watch for, for those. That's who, you know, we have to take care of those people and, that's how we're going to do it. Exactly. And take care of our community. Volcano Winery has been so great in supporting our community. And I think you're well known for that. I mean, I um, years ago started tasting some of the wines and thought they were great at the local restaurants. And then it seemed like you and Del stepped up and all of a sudden it bloomed. It was in the community, part of the community. I mean, I enjoyed some great tastings at Extreme Exposure, right. you know, that uh, Black a, and White Night. That, that was, was fun. That is a fun time. <laughs> but you guys really have supported our community, and I appreciate that. And and Thank I think you. the community is starting to say, how can we support our local businesses Correct. if the tourists aren't showing up? So come on up, pick come, up your wine. Come on up, pick up your wine. Come and say hi to Lonnie and our staff and everybody that's here. Um, Bruce's photos are here. His, his place is not open yet. You can still buy them here. Um, Marty is here. Quite a few different local. I would say everything that's in our tasting room right now is local. For sure. Yeah. Great. That, that we have for selling there. Even from our jewelry, from Keiko, that we do her glass jewelry. We've been selling her jewelry for 20 years. Oh, that's great. Nice. Yeah. So it's just been fun. And we keep, you know, we have, and we have relationships. Like I have, I have Bruce's work in there and we have um, Brad's. 
be Brad Lewis's. And yeah. those are the two that I have the relationships with. And Love that's, man. that's what we, that's what we do. That's what we do for each other. And just yeah. imagine you can visit the place where we do our podcast. Right. Yeah. <laughs> There's a little plaque on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> And maybe you want to invest in a golf course down the street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mick and Bruce and I would sure love to play there again. Yeah. We can play there with, without it being manicured, I guess. That would be hard to find your ball. Well, but. it's hard to find my ball regardless. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we hear um, lately on this island about the Kama'aina economy, the local economy, and how, how much can you benefit from the local economy and, and local residents coming to support you versus – you know, can, can that sustain you? I believe it could. I absolutely believe it could. Um, we get a lot of local people that come up and visit with us. And we'd uh, like to get more. We would love to get yeah. more. <laughs> a lot uh, of people we still talk to have never heard of the wine. And so it's always like we're just trying to do the coconut wireless too. Like you tell your friend and you tell your friend. But we're always advertising it. And we would love Kamaina coming up. They love the tasting. Um, they definitely love the Hawaiian guava and the volcano red and the cheese platters that we have here. And their own local winery here. It's the only winery on the island and the southernmost in the U.S. and it's super special. And a lot of us here are local Kamaina, born and raised here, and especially people that create the wine um, on that side and take care of the fields and, and things like that. So we definitely welcome and would love more Kamaina to come up and enjoy this beautiful property. Yeah, and they do, you know, they come up and they bring their families and then they bring their guests and mm -hmm. um, it, it's quite beautiful and, and they're very thankful. They come in and they thank Lonnie and they thank me and they really appreciate when, when they come up because those that, and it's amazing those that don't know that there is a winery on this island, no matter what you spend in advertising, <laughs> it's, they're going to like, there's a winery here? And it's like, when was no. the last time you were out of Hilo though? But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, you, you do your best, but once that they come up and they get over that little crest that they got to get up from over Hilo side and, and then come in, they become regulars yep. and we'll no. see them here every month yeah. if they've been here up. once they're bringing people back which is amazing <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. they you're, all become our friends and family your winery was always a regular stop after our golf our round yep. of golf at Volcano yes Radio. we appreciate it yeah. yeah yeah. we have a lot of uh, 19 holders that come over here yeah, yeah. so now we got to figure out a, a new routine yeah. So we can include the winery. Well, sure. Hopefully the park will open <laughs> soon and uh, we'll be enjoying that again. Yeah, yeah the park yeah. is, uh, I, I'm hoping within the next week or so, the park will reopen. They've started um, with the Mauna Loa Road for the access to Bird Park. That's, that's right. That's that just, a, opened, that just yeah. opened last week. And I noticed that they are now um, cutting back the the brush that was growing over the road. Um, <laughs> so they're taking care of that. And um, I think once they get in there, I know the, the teams of the, uh, a lot of the staff is going back to work there. So yeah. um, hopefully once that is open, cause that's, you know, it's a million plus people it, when the people are here can, can come. So we always get a nice, if you come to the park, you should come to the winery. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, that's if you come to the island, definitely. you should come to the winery. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. What's the significance of Mount Aloha Road? I haven't been up there. There's there's hiking, right? Great trails up there. Yeah. Great. Um, tra they call What do they call Bird Bird Trail? Bird, bird Park. Bird Park? Yep. Tree Mold, huh? There's that yeah, the tree mold. So you have the tree molds yeah. drive, wow. which um, is that right little one mile kind of circular right. loop, right? Which is beautiful. And there's little trails in between. And then as you go up Mauna Loa Road, there's a scenic lookout point at the top of that. But it's beautiful um, bird watching, trees, coal, eucalyptus. It's, yeah. it's a totally beautiful different kind of koa. landscape up there and yeah. for Onfana. So it's a really beautiful place. But and it's definitely just a lookout point. And when you get to the top point. of the road, you can hike to the top of the mountain. Yeah, from the lookout point, I think you can get it's a long hike. Foot, foot long situation. Hike. We've actually have had um, lost hikers come back through the vineyard. No way. They're really lost. Oh, yeah, they'll, wow. some of them will start off on uh, Saddle Road and, and come in and get caught and get turned around because we're not really from that way to go to Saddle Road. I mean, we because I drive back and forth over there now. It's like, oh, if I could only just go right yeah, there, exactly. I'm right there. <laughs> but yeah, there was um, a, a couple actually, um, an older couple that um, spent the night. They got, were lost and they were dehydrated. Oh, wow. They came and were able to give them some water and get them out of their way. <laughs> oh, wow. But um, yeah, you have to be careful. You could get turned around back there. And then we had the... Uh, 
well, the fire that was burning, that was on our property line also, too. So we oh, had that really? to do. Yeah. So the uh, when they were coming over from the mainland and everything, they were go through the back and they built a new uh, escape road, I guess it would mm-hmm. be, for mm-hmm. the for this community oh, right, to, to yeah. be able to, to get out if we would get locked in yeah. over here. Um, so, yeah, it's it's it's... it's one day you guys have all come. Bruce, you've been in the back. You've been on a tour before. But the the grounds, the the vineyards and the tea, uh, it's it's gorgeous out there. It's, it's just breathtaking. Yeah. And we have one of our fields, which is our Syrah, which we're just we bottled it. It's really good. Um, and we're going to have a big harvest for this year, so we're going to start doing our Syrah again too. Nice. But that field that's out there, it's actually it sits back. Lower altitude, lower altitude, lower altitude, and it sits kind of like in a, a ravine where there's lava walls on the sides of it, so it gets wow. really hot back there. Less windy, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. less wind. It's it's, it's beautiful. Absolutely I'm kind of waiting for you guys to turn this lava tube right back here into a cellar. Where well, can... that's that's on there. <laughs> Uh, Dell's list, that was his list that he wanted really bad to do a barrel tasting and uh-huh. build a platform over it and do the put the barrels down in the cellar and they have it on a pulley system and bring <laughs> oh, the <laughs> barrels up and do a barrel tasting. You've got oh a lava tube gosh, right here on the property? Yes. Amazing. Oh, yeah. yeah. A yeah, bunch of lava tubes. Yeah, we have a bunch of lava tubes yeah. on the property. You have to be very careful. But the main uh, really large one over here, it's... It's probably 50 feet wide. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty decent. Yeah, Although pretty after the earthquakes, I'm not sure about being in that hole. You know? right. yeah. <laughs> but right. it goes down about 30 feet that mm-hmm. they've it's been pretty, down. It's kind of deep, yeah. Into it. Um, yeah, we've had, there's been things that have fallen in. There's some skulls down there, but it's okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> just, pi- just pigs. Just pigs. Just pigs. Skulls. 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 <laughs> just pigs. But um, they're actually going to do a, uh, a fence. They're doing a pig line uh, fence that they're going to be. So we, Kamehameha's are, are putting it up to protect because they have a, a farm on the opposite side here too. So they're going to uh, fence basically about our whole vineyard in for us. Good for you. To keep the pigs out. You have out, a pig problem up here? Oh, yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, they destroyed our lots of stuff. No kidding. Um, I bet they love wine grapes. They like everything. <laughs> they want to dig up the roots. They want the roots. Mm-hmm. Oh, they can yeah. top it up. The tea yeah, I mean, and, the, and the grapes. Um, our irrigation systems are... Yeah. <laughs> the birds, the geese, the... Pheasants, they want the grapes. I'm sure the pigs want it too, but then the pigs want to dig everything up. So we have dual pests yeah. over here with the nanny, that. We've had the, the nanny, we, we net everything too when the grapes are out, which it's, it, it's the craziest looking thing, but um, we, we have to net everything because the birds and the nanny were eating the, the grapes that are in the front of the wire. We call them our show and tell grapes just so people know, yes, we do grow grapes here. Sure. Um, but they were they go at the bottom of it and they actually jump up and eat the grapes right <laughs> off the vines. And uh, the rangers, they come and they tag them. And so when they're here, they usually walk in. So I have, we have a phone number to call them if they're up here. So I called them and said, um, well, they're, they're, your friends are here and they're eating my grapes. You need to come and do something. He gets, well, they don't eat grapes. I said, uh, <laughs> yes, they do eat grapes. <laughs> so he was here in about five minutes and he came in. He goes, they're eating your grapes. I said, I know that they're eating our grapes. For it's those like who a, don't know, what is what is the nene? What is a nene? is an endemic goose. Yeah. And, the and nene what does is, endemic mean, Bruce? <laughs> it has evolved to the point of being its own species, mm-hmm. naturally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, it looks similar to a Canada goose. Uh, it's probably, um, you know, many thousands of years ago. Uh, and what are the regulations that go along course. with the nene? Well, you can't harm them. You can't uh, disturb them. You can't touch them. You can't yeah. shoo them. And they're very, they're, because they, they've evolved here in the island, um, they've become very tame. So they don't have this innate fear of humans. So once somebody feeds them or something, they they accept all humans. So that's uh, part of uh, the reason for their demise, you know. And uh, they were taken to the brink of extinction, I think, down to maybe 30 birds or something. Something like that, yeah. 
and then the Lyman family, no, Shipman, Shipman family, Shipman. yeah, sent some birds off to Cambridge in Europe, and uh, at an aviary they uh, brought the the birds back. Huh. Yeah. And now, now they're actually quite plentiful, right? Yeah. yeah. They yeah they, uh, they've actually well, been around. taken off of the endangered species list. Is nope. that true? No. Not no, true. Not yeah. true. That's a lie. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but you know, way back when, I don't know how long ago, seventeen hundreds, eighteen hundreds, they used to eat the goose. Yeah. They were oh, on the sure. menu at the volcano house way really? back then. Yeah, just like turkey. Yeah. Huh. They were plentiful back then. Which yeah. was maybe part of the problem. <laughs> <you know? laughs> This is a good opportunity to take a quick break and tell everyone about Bruce's coffee, which we're selling on our website. <laughs> take it away, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> well, I drink a lot of coffee, so I've got my own label of 100% Kau coffee. What's it called? Kau Mana. Ooh. Yeah. It's good. It's good. I drank some this very morning. It's very, it's very chocolatey, <laughs> very earthy. It's a very different coffee for Hawaii. And for those watching on YouTube, I think Bruce is breaking out a bag. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. There Beautiful. It is. There it is. My mana. <laughs> Very nice. That's awesome. And of course, this wine was great. I, I'm a big fan of the wine up here. Thank Ever you. since Bruce has brought me in several yeah. times after <laughs> playing 18 at Volcano Golf Course. And um, what's, the, what's the website again, Marie, for www.volcanowinery.com. Come yeah. and see us. Buy lots of wine. Get some tea. 20% off right 20% now, right? 20% off. Yeah. Yes. Nice. And that will automatically come on air. And if you have a challenge that you don't like to be on websites and go in, give us a call. We will be happy to take your orders over the phone. What's the number? Oh, boy. 808-967-7772. Correct. One more time. 808-967-7772. Perfect. Perfect. And awesome. tell us, Bruce, if we like mana, how do we obtain that? Visit our website on hawaiantimepodcast.com and click on the merch link. Merch link. <laughs> <laughs> and that will help us to stay alive. Yes. Get yourself an on Hawaiian Time mug while you're at it. Yes. We have yep. a few different items for sale and it does um, go to support us and we need your support. Yeah, All three do. or four of you out there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, just had a chance to Google that. And Marie, you're right. The nene are no longer considered endangered. They're still threatened, but no longer endangered. We'll accept your retraction, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to do a shout out because we have some super fans who are supporting us. I've got it. You have it? Yeah. I mean, I we know. Want to put, we want to do a little special shout out here, a special mahalo to some of the people who have already ordered some of the coffee, some of Bruce's coffee, and some T-shirts from our website. Awesome. Waylon Lee Boykin, Landis Major, Patty Doonan, and Kara Regeer. Kara and Sean, former Volcano residents. Yeah, I think we ruined a surprise, right? Yeah, uh -oh. <laughs> yeah. Kara had made, was trying to surprise Sean with some of our merch, and we uh -oh. texted Sean and say, hey, tell Kara Don't thanks listen for buying to this, some Sean. merch. Oh, boy. Don't she listen said, to this podcast, oh, yeah, Sean. <laughs> so that was supposed to be a surprise. Thanks, guys. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> and for those guys that don't follow us on Facebook, Sean is um, the helicopter pilot that Mick and I flew with a lot in a lot. 2018. Great pilot. Yeah. Great good, guy. And a good Not golf really buddy. that good a golfer. He thinks he's better than he is. <laughs> but he's better than I am, so what? Yeah, he was a regular up here, too. He used to yeah, come. he yeah, lived he right down the yeah, block, yeah, right? Yeah. Andy, didn't yeah. you put a link on the website? And I know you put a link on our website so I people did. can find Volcano Winery. I put a link on our website to make sure people yeah. get, get a hold of Volcano Winery. Yeah. Go to the show notes for episode nine. Brilliant. Okay, so that's going to do it for this episode. Mahalo Marie and Lonnie at Volcano Winery. Mahalo Nui, guys. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you. Mahalo. Mahalo. Don't forget to sign up for our email updates list to get the behind-the-scenes content, the stuff that we talk about before and after the podcast, but the mics are still rolling, unbeknownst <laughs> to everybody. <laughs> uh, you can find that on our website. Go to the top of onhawaiantimepodcast.com. Click on the email updates link way up on the top right of the page there. You can also support us by buying some of our merch, including my coffee and an on Hawaiian Time mug. 
click the merch link on our website. Good stuff over there. <laughs> Check it out. Special thanks to Joel Marcus, who designed our logo. We love our logo. We and to Jamie of Silver Line Sound. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you, brother. <laughs> So, if you haven't subscribed to this podcast, please do it now. It's really important. It's really easy. You can do it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. It helps us attract advertisers, and boy, do we need to keep this podcast going. (laughs) I'm Mick Calber. I'm Bruce Amari. I'm Ann Calber. I'm Tim Coakley. And you've been On On Hawaiian Time. Time. Boy, that's a lot easier to do live, isn't it? Wow. <laughs> Aloha, guys. Cue the theme music. Oh. <laughs> Good enough.